thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Lift up my hand to thy name. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. I live shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hand to thy name. To thy name, I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands to thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands to thy name. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My loving kindness is better than life. I love shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands to thy name. like to say tonight we appreciate everybody that showed up everybody's just about vacated us tonight they gone to prayer conference in Tampa but we glad for who's here and we came to make a joyful noise unto the Lord tonight and we come to get a blessing so at this time I'd like to welcome y'all and uh, I'd just like to say glad to have you our, our Father which art in heaven we come to you tonight we ask you, Lord, to meet us here tonight. We ask you to anoint us, let your spirit fall on us, and let us realize when we go home from here that we've been here and got a blessing. And we will praise your name in Jesus' name. I'm going to the enemy's camp And I'm taking back what he stole from me Taking back what he stole from me Taking back what he stole from me Well, I'm going to the enemy's camp And I'm taking back what he stole from me He's under my feet He's under my feet He's under my feet He's under my feet Satan is under my feet Well, I'm going to the enemy's camp and I'm taking back what he stole from me. Taking back what he stole from me. Taking back what he stole from me. I'm going to the enemy's camp. And I'm taking back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. Oh, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Oh, he's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. I went to the enemy's camp. And I'm taking back what he stole from me. Well, I'm. Took back what he stole from me. Well, I took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Well, I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Well, I took back what he stole from me. Well, I. Took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Well, I'm going to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Well, I took back what he stole from me. Well, I. Took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. 
He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Well, I'm put to the enemy's camp. And I'm taking back what he stole from me. Well, I'm taking back what he stole from me. Well, I'm taking back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. And I'm taking back what he stole from me. Well, I'm taking back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Hallelujah. Amen. But truly, Satan is. Amen. Under our feet. Amen. And we have the victory in the blessed name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on in. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Where there's power in the name of Jesus. Where there's power in the name of the Lord. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Well, there's healing in the name of Jesus. Well, there's healing in the name of the Lord. Well, there's healing in the name of The sweetest name I know. Well, there's joy in the name of Jesus. Well, there's joy in the name of the Lord. Well, there's joy in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Well, there's victory in the name of Jesus. Well, there's victory in the name of the Lord. Well, there's victory in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Well, there's love in the name of Jesus. Well, there's love in the name of the Lord. Well, there's love in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. There's salvation in the name of Jesus, there's salvation in the name of the Lord. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of the Lord. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name. Jesus, come on and bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus. Well, there's power in the name of the Lord. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Well, there's healing in the name of Jesus. Well, there's healing in the name of the Lord. Yes, there's healing in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Come on, let's bless that 
wonderful name of Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. The sweetest name I know. Come. Now, now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to Give your heart, oh come, just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, welcome, one Just now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Willingly we choose to surrender our lives. Willingly our knees will bow. With all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. So come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Oh, come. Just as you are to worship, oh, come. Just as you are before your God, welcome. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Willingly we choose to surrender our lives. Willingly our knees will bow. With all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. So come. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Oh, come. Just as you are to worship. Oh, come. Just as you are before your God, oh God. We're going to ask our choir to come on around now and sing for us. You know, we can come to the Lord just as we are. We ain't got to try purging ourselves up or try cleaning ourselves up. All we got to do is come and ask Him to do it. And he'll take over and do what needs to be done. We don't have to worry about it.
appreciate that choir singing. We got a few announcements. Let's not forget victory, a sound of victory practice on Tuesday, prayer meeting on Tuesday night, back here on Wednesday night for regular service. Uh, U turn will be going Friday night to uh, Lady Lakes. That's ones that can back our youth over there in Lady Lakes for a one night revival. The men will be meeting right after church on Sunday night for a short meeting. Right after that, there will be desserts or a meal out in the fellowship hall next Sunday night. Uh, don't forget your Bible reading this week. Keep up with it. And kids jam. We need everybody to see Sister Leslie. It's got kids involved in kids jam. And that should be all the announcements that we have at this time. Anybody needs to know anything about the Friday night service, see Sister Rebecca or Sister Leslie with kids jam. Brother Will Cox about the men's meeting. At this time, we're going to receive our even an offering, we ask the ushers to come forward. Father, which art in heaven, we come to you tonight, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to take this offering, supply it to the needs of our church, multiply it, so we can get out and reach more souls for you, and we give you praise in your name. Amen. Amen. This time, Sister Linda's going to come around and give us a special tonight. Forgiven, and he leads me. 
me step away as love wants gather round him Fill the room For soon he'll be going To his home far away As he raised his hands toward heaven This they heard him say My God's been with me step of the way the step that I take brings me closer to that city built by the master's scarred hand oh the price has been my sins are forgiven and he leads me step up away oh, the cross has been paid my sins are forgiven and he leads me step up the way have a song by Brother Roger Blit. My heart was so torn and burdened with care trouble and sorrow or heavy to bear but I called on the Lord and in my despair he came unto me and lifted me up and answered my prayer now I have a hope that is steadfast and sure Oh, I have an anchor that will endure. Yes, my anchor holds beyond the grave. For Jesus our Lord, the great resurrection is mighty to save. No sorrow may come to darken my way oh I have an anchor a hope and a stay so I'm praising the Lord I'm glad I can see that Jesus delights to answer the prayers of those who obey now I have a hope that is steadfast and sure oh I have an anchor that will endure yes my anchor holds me on the grave for Jesus our Lord the great resurrection is mighty to save now I have a hope 
mir ist steadfast in Schuh. Oh, I have an anchor that will endure. Yes, my anchor holds beyond the grave. For Jesus our Lord, the great resurrection is mighty to save. To all those who weep, the Lord draweth nigh. Oh, he too is weeping. He hears your hearts cry. But in Jesus our Lord, the soul never dies. For he is the resurrection of life, our loved one shall rise. Now I have a hope that is steadfast and sure. Oh, I have an anchor that will endure. Yes, my anchor holds beyond the grave. For Jesus our Lord, the great resurrection is mighty to save. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thought of this song this morning while Brother Renfro was preaching. He talked about the hope. You got to have it, folks. You got to have a hope. How many of you have got lost loved ones? This went on. Not lost, but saved loved ones who's went on before you. We've lost them for this time, but not forever. I love the words of this, especially the third verse there, where the soul never dies. For he is the resurrection of life, and our loved ones shall rise, and so shall we. Can I sing that last verse one more time? Hallelujah. If it don't bless you, it'll sure bless me. Hallelujah. To all those who weep, the Lord draweth nigh. Oh, he too is weeping. He hears your hearts cry. But in Jesus our Lord, the soul never dies. For he is the resurrection of life, our loved one shall rise. Now I have a hope that is steadfast and sure. Oh, I have an anchor that will endure. Yes, my anchor holds beyond the grave. For Jesus our Lord, the great resurrection is mighty to save. Now I have a hope that is steadfast and sure. Oh, I have an anchor that will endure. Yes, my anchor holds beyond the grave. For Jesus our Lord, the great resurrection is mighty to save. Thank God for that anchor that holds us. When the doctor walks in and says you ain't got long to live, he don't know. All he can do is guess, but the man upstairs can tell you when it's going to be. We're going to turn this service over to Brother Faircloth and his wife at this time. We want him to come up here and take liberty in the Lord and bring us the word that the Lord has given him at this time. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Amen. The Lord is good. It's always an honor and a privilege to be able to come uh, before the presence of the Lord to bring His message. I want to say a thank you very much for your hospitality that you've showed us here since we've been coming since March. Uh, you've been very, f uh, a lot of times it's hard for a minister to find a place to go to church because it's very hard, but you all have just opened up your arms and welcomed us here, and we thank you very much. Uh, Christy, you want to come testify or stand and testify? Greet the people at least. Get up. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get her to sing, so I had to get her to testify at least. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Uh, you're very lucky to hear to have God's presence. A lot of churches you go to today doesn't have the move in the Spirit. They don't welcome the Holy Spirit. They don't welcome Jesus into the church. All it is is form. And so I'm thankful for the opportunity to find a church uh, that, that allows a movement in the Spirit. And thankful for Pastor Odom for his faithfulness and for him letting the Holy Spirit move, uh, for him preaching the Word of God, preaching Jesus Christ. That's what it is today. It's Jesus Christ. More and more today, we need God's touch. We need God's anointing upon our hearts. In these last days, truly, I believe that we are in the last days. That we need God's touch. We need God's anointing upon our hearts and our lives. We need America to get back to the basics of what they was founded upon, upon in we, God we trust. Uh, we need the church to get back to the basics of believing in God and prayer and believing in the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to talk to you just for a few minutes tonight. I know we have the social tonight, but I'm going to preach what the Lord put upon my heart, ever how long it is, and then we'll have prayer, and then we'll uh, go fellowship and have the dessert that many of you have prepared. If you have your Bibles, go to John chapter 21. I want to talk to you a few minutes tonight, uh, just a simple one word, again. A-G-A-I-N. Uh, not aching like in the Bible, the uh, Old Testament, but the simple word again. It means to, to be able to have his touch again, to do it one more time, to feel his presence again. Verse 21, chapter 21, St. John, verse number 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said unto them, I am going fishing. I am going back to my profession. I am going back to what I know to do. Going back fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out immediately, got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. They fished all night long, but when the morning come had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the book, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for it had removed it, and plunged, it into, plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with them. Then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, 153, and although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? 
knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he had raised him, was raised from the dead. When you look at this scripture here, you said in the verse 14, it says this is the third time that Jesus came and showed himself to the disciples. If you look back in chapter next previous chapter, chapter 20 and 19, you see that Jesus had been uh, crucified. He'd been, he was killed on the cross of Calvary. He was buried. And on the third day he arose. It started in, in chapter 20. And you see Mary was going to the tomb to see Jesus. When he got there, she found that the tomb was rolled away. That the rock was not rolled away. And he so she supposed something had happened to him. So she went back and ran back to the disciples and told Peter and John and said, I don't know where Jesus is. The stone is rolled away and I don't know where he is. So Peter and John, John took off a run because he was younger and he outrun Peter and when he got there he just stayed on the outside. But when Peter got there he went all the way in and looked. After he looked then John went in there and looked. And then a couple days later, we see that uh, Jesus, they was worried. And we see that Mary was there. And the angel, after Peter and John left, the, uh, the angels came to Mary because she was worried. And so, do, do not worry, do not be afraid. And there was a man behind him, and he supposed it to be the carpenter, to be a gardener, but it was Jesus. Jesus came to her and told her all was well. But as they, as you went, we see now the first time they was in the upper room. They was gathered together in church. And as they was in the church, it said that Jesus appeared there. And it says the door was shut. I want you to know something about the mighty power of our God. The mighty awesomeness of our God. There's nothing that can keep Jesus out. There is nothing that can keep Jesus out of our heart, out of our life. We think we may shut the door. We think we may lock up all the windows. But when it's time when you need something from the Lord, Jesus can break every barrier. Jesus can break every obstacle. Jesus can come through every situation. And Jesus appears to them. They were doubting. They were worried. They didn't know what happened to Jesus. Jesus appeared to them and said, Be not afraid. Peace be unto you. This was the first time Jesus appeared to him. It said all of the disciples were there but Thomas. This is how come it's very important that you don't need to stay home from church. That when, when you stay up from home from church, that's when a miracle happens. That's when something happens. That's come it's very important when the doors are open, we need to be in the house of God. They went and told Thomas what had happened. And Thomas said, I will not believe until I can see him and I can touch him and I can put my hands in his sores. It said eight days later, they was in prayer meeting again. They was in the house of God again. They was in church again. But this time, you know who was there? Doubting Thomas was there. He didn't stay home this time. This is how come it's very important that we don't stay home from church. You be at church. Thomas was there this time. And as they went to church again, it said they was praying and all, and it said Jesus appeared to them again. It said peace. He went up to him and said, Thomas, see my hand? Touch it. You see my side? Touch it. You know what? Jesus is omniscient. Jesus knows everything about you. Jesus knows everything you say. Jesus knows everything you doubt. Everything that you think. And Jesus knew what Thomas had said. And he said, I will not believe until I can touch you. So what does he do when he comes in? He's already appeared to the others and they already knew him. But he came just for that one purpose. That Thomas would see one of the disciples. When you think about this, the disciples, uh, they were followers of Jesus. They walked with him, and they'd done all these things. And now we see them. Now they say, let's go back to my profession. They were fishermen. A lot of them were. 
So Peter goes back and goes fishing and all the rest of them goes with him and they fish all night long. Nothing. You ever worked all night long and didn't accomplish a thing? Out fishing or out hunting and you don't catch anything or you don't even see a deer or anything? Isn't that frustrating? Can you imagine how they've been, been there all night long and hadn't caught anything? And all of a sudden they see a man on the shore that says, have you got anything to eat? Imagine they said, no. We've been fishing all night long. Jesus said. They didn't know it was Jesus. They just seen the figure there. And he said, cast your net on the other side. Could you imagine them, Peter, and the, the fishermen there? They said, we've cast it on this side. We've cast it on that side. We've cast it in the front. We've cast it in the back. We've done every kind of bait we can imagine. And we've been fishing out here for 12 hours long. And now he tells us to throw on the other side. Doesn't he think that we've already thrown on the other side? But as he did, they listened to him. And they threw it on the other side. And what happened? It was full. Aren't you glad in our hearts and our lives when we need God, He comes in our heart and our life again. It doesn't matter just seven days ago or eight days ago, He came in their midst and touched them. He came again the eighth day. And then later we see them fishing here and what did Jesus do? He come and met their need. They worked all night long. They didn't have anything to eat. They were frustrated. But Jesus came to them and ministered to them and gave them what their need, gave them their need and they fished all night and finally they brought in 150 it said. Brought in a whole bunch that the net wouldn't even contain it. Again. I want you to know tonight in a Pentecostal church, really in any church, you're the one that determines the amount of blessing you receive. In our hearts and our lives, we are the one that comes and determines if we're going to receive anything from God. Are we going to stay home like Doubting Thomas did and miss out on a miracle? The next time he came to church, he was there and he received his miracle. He got to receive the touch of his hand. And I want to tell you tonight, again, we need God's touch. We need God's anointing in our heart. And if it takes God touching us three times, he'll come to us three times. I remember when God saved me. I felt his presence in a mighty way. I remember when God filled me with the Holy Spirit. I felt his presence in a mighty way. A mighty anointing, a mighty touch. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit is awesome and it's all powerful. But in your hearts and your life, we don't need to be satisfied where we are. We need God's touch. Every day of our heart, every day of our life, we need to feel His touch and feel His presence again in our hearts and our lives. I'm glad today that God doesn't stop when we get saved. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, Pastor Rick's got it all now. He's got salvation. He's got the Holy Ghost. And he leaves us. But no. He says again. He'll come and touch you. Again. He'll come and meet your need. Again. He'll come and meet your need. And today in our hearts and our lives. We need God's touch again. We need God's touch again. Maybe you hadn't felt God's presence since you got saved. You need to feel His presence again. Maybe you hadn't spoken tongues since you got baptized with the Holy Spirit. You need to speak in tongues again tonight. We need God's presence. We need God's anointing upon our heart. We need God's anointing upon our life. We need Him. And over and over again, we need His touch and His anointing again. 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 Again, when I think about this and all that God does and thank the Lord that God's grace and God's mercy is always there to come give us what we need. When you think about this, we think about this, I remember in the old time when we was growing up, long time ago, about 45 years ago, and even before you read in the books about the Brush Harbor days, you know, them days they had to depend upon God. 
And I believe in all my heart and my life today, that's what it's going to come down to. We're going to have to learn to believe in God for everything that we need. Back in the old days when they got sick, they didn't run to the doctor. They would call the elders of the church. They would call the pastors of the church and come anoint them and pray for them. And, and, uh, and the Lord would heal them. And that's what we're doing tonight. Tonight we need to go get back to the basics of God. We need Him again. I truly believe this within my, all my heart and all my life. In these last days it's going to come down to where Christians are going to have to depend upon God like they've never felt before. Had to pretend upon Him and trust in Him and believe in Him and confide in Him and know in Him and trust in Him for He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. When I think about this again, you need His presence again today. You need to feel His power again today. And I was praying. Pastor Odom asked me Wednesday night if I would preach tonight, and I was praying. And the Lord just put this in my heart. The Lord put this in my life since then. I said, Rick, we need God again. We need God in America. We need God in the church again. We've become laxed and laxative in, in our beliefs in God and our prayer and our believing in Him and our trusting in Him. It's going to come back to the basics where we need God again in our heart, when we need God again in our life, so where we doesn't depend upon man, it doesn't depend upon our leaders, but what we depend upon is God Almighty because God Almighty is our source. God Almighty is our strength. God is Almighty. is the only thing that we need. He's the only answer that we have today for a lost and dying world and how do we get it we need God's touch again God's touch again we need him 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 again just thinking about this and praying about this I remember when I was a teenager I was sick one Sunday. Had a real bad infection, throat infection, or your swollen glands. That's what it was. And I didn't go to church. But that, that afternoon, the youth pastor come by and prayed for me, checking on me. See how come I wasn't at church? And he came and laid hands on me and prayed for me. All the swelling went down completely healed I remember back over and over again when times in my life that I felt God that I had his touch again and I want you to look back in your mind's eyes to things in your life and things in your heart where God has come and met your need where God has come and ministered to you when you didn't know where to turn and you didn't know where to go God came on this scene times in your heart and times in your life we don't know anything or don't know where to go God comes in our scene today we need God again we need God again we need God again we need his mighty power we need his mighty backs it says here this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead it doesn't matter how many times you need God's touch. God is always there. It doesn't matter what you need tonight. Whether you need healing. Whether you need a miracle. Whether you need salvation. Whether you need prayer for an unsaved loved one. No matter what the need is, God is here to meet your need today. To give you your touch again today. That's the thing about our God is that He's always there. He's waiting to meet our needs and He's waiting to touch us again. What do you need today? What do you need in your heart? 
What do you need in your life? I was thinking about it in my heart, in my life. I remember the early days I was reading and studying. Early 1900, they had the Zuzu revival. The outpouring of the Spirit and what produced the Pentecostal churches, the Assemblies of God and the Church of God and the Pentecostal holiness and all these Pentecostal churches came out of this. A move of the Spirit. What we need today in these last days is we need a hunger. We need the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts. We need the Holy Spirit to move in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit to penetrate. Penetrate our hearts. Penetrate our lives today. Holy Ghost, be real right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask right now that thy will would be done in this service. We ask right now that your presence would feel this place. Will the pianist come on in on up? God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. He's here to meet your need. He's here to give your touch again. We need the Holy Ghost. When was the last time you spoke in tongues? When was the last time you felt His presence? When was the last time you shouted and danced? When was the last time you heard His voice? These last days we need His presence again. We need Him again. We need Him again. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. It doesn't matter the trials. The Lord knows all about it. And He's here to meet your need. He's here to meet that situation. He's here to give you the touch again. You say, Pastor Rick, I've asked and I've come and I've asked. And I haven't received what I needed. Come today believing. And you shall receive. Whatever you need today. These altars are open. For you to come and pray. Let's find a place around the altars today. And just seek Him. Ask Him to touch you one more time. Ask them to let them to feel you presence. Feel his anointing one more time. One more time, touch us again. One more time, Lord, touch us again. Touch us again. Touch us again. Touch us again.